Hey guys, it's just Johnny here today. So, I'm gonna be doing a random review for This War of Mine, a 2D survival game set during a fictional war, made by 11-Bit Studios, the same guys that brought you the Anomaly games. So, what makes This War of Mine unique specifically, and what is it? Well, it's not your usual military or war game, right? You're not going to be playing a soldier. It's not an FPS or a third-person shooter. As I said, it's 2D. And you'll be playing as civilians instead of soldiers. What you'll basically be doing in this game is scavenging the fictional city of Pagorin Graznavia in order to gather supplies such as food, medicine, herbs, and other building supplies to help you survive in this war. Now, immediately... Upon reaching the main menu, you can probably tell this game is not going to be a light-hearted, easy-go-lucky, have-fun kind of game. This game is dark. Like, really dark. It takes the themes of war extremely seriously and realistically, more so than most war games. And none of these characters you play as are anyone special. They're not. They're not highly trained special ops soldiers, or well-renowned doctors, or anything of the sort. No. The characters in this game are just your average Joes, unfortunate enough to be caught up in a war they want nothing to do with, and were just unable to escape in time. You play as teachers, police officers, lawyers, parents, and photographers in this game. You can even play as children. Yeah. freaking children in a war game. That's... That's not the best setting for children, alright? And if you're anything like me, on my first playthrough, you'll completely break your kid within the first two weeks, leaving them completely useless and emotionally depressed. Yeah, that's right, this game has consequences, real ones too. Steal from innocent survivors? Well, some of your people may begin to feel sad to realize what they've become and the lengths they must go to in order to survive. One of your characters die? You can bet your other characters will begin to feel as if all they're doing is futile. Murder someone out of cold blood? Well, again, your survivors will take a major hit towards their morale, which will then require you to pay close attention to their biological needs, talking to them with other survivors, getting drunk, playing the guitar, and a whole lot of other things. It can get so bad to the point where those characters feeling depressed will actually hinder other survivors around them. Not only will that particular survivor perform worse because they're depressed, but they may also prevent the other survivors from getting good sleep or any at all because they might be up all night crying or someone else might be up all night with them trying to comfort them. Every action is meaningful and should be chosen wisely. However, everything works and vice versa too. You know, when you do bad things, your people may feel bad. But, when you do good things, your characters may feel good about themselves. So, you can choose to help fellow survivors knocking on your door, you can trade with people in need of it, and you can just donate to the homeless. And in return, those people you helped out might help you out later down the road, gifting you food, medicine, or other helpful supplies. Overall, this War of Mine just really takes a unique twist on war games. There's very little action in this game, unless you actually choose to seek it out. And depending on how long the war goes on for, you may never need to visit a dangerous location, ever. And even if you do, you still might not even need a fight because this game relies heavily on stealth, and the stealth mechanics are pretty good. Now, the game isn't too difficult. Most things are pretty explanatory. You know, you have hand icons, which means you can loot. You have lock icons, which means containers can only be opened with lockpicks or crowbars. You have axe icons, which mean you can chop apart furniture. It's all very simple. That can be a bad thing too, though. For example, the combat. Now, the combat is extremely simple. You just basically click on the target you want to attack, if your chances of landing a hit is high enough, good job, you smack the dude, his health bar dropped a little bit. However, it just feels clunky and finicky at times. The combat is easily the weakest link of the entire game. 
That's why I always tried my best to avoid it. The success of winning fights is also mainly based on your character's traits. So, unless you have a skilled fighter or a policeman who's good at shooting, you might not want to try it at all because even if your chances are high, you can still miss. So, it's it's too risky, especially since this game has perma death. You may just want to skip it altogether or just avoid it and just never try. Just stay in the safe areas, okay? So being a survival game, what makes this one stand out from the others? Well, I feel that supplies are always scarce in this game, not just in the beginning, but throughout the entirety of your playthroughs. Like sure, you may have a little more food than you need at the moment, but if you take advantage of that and eat too much, more than you need, you might completely run out of food in a few days if you're unable to find more during night scavenges. You just, you never really feel safe with your supplies in this game because there are also raids if your people aren't well equipped, if your base isn't well guarded, if you're just not well prepared, you can lose a lot of things from raids, and you might be raided a lot if you're not well prepared. Also, the game has a winter mechanic, where you'll be using fuel at an exponential rate to keep your house warm, at least I was. Even when I upgraded my, my furnace, I still needed to expend a bunch of fuel each day just to keep my house warm. Because if you don't, your people are going to get sick. If they get sick, you're going to need to use medicine. If you're out of medicine, you're going to have to be going to the hospital. If you go to the hospital, you're going to be wasting nights. And nights are so precious because you need to get as much as you can each and every night to make sure that your people can continue living on. You may also need to barter and trade with people to get the items that you immediately need. So for example, you might need to trade away a knife so you can get a bandage. Or you might have to trade away some bullets to get medicine. This game does a great job at making the entire situation seem bleak and at times, completely hopeless. On my first playthrough, I saw my base raided multiple times, losing tons of things, feeling desperate. I stole from two elderly innocents, neglecting my daughter, and even pulling a knife on a guy just trying to get meds for his sick dad. I just didn't know what to do. I was so desperate for anything. Now these mechanics on top of the well done soundtrack just adds to the overall realism. And these mechanics allow you to truly have unique experiences. Unlike Telltale games or other choose your own adventure games, there are no false choices. There is no set ending or set outcome, just like Shadow of Mordor and XCOM, the mechanics give you the freedom to make your own stories and have your own experiences that no one else has had. On my first playthrough, my base kept getting raided because I didn't know how to properly propel them. You need to board up windows and holes, build an alarm system and make sure your survivors are not only awake and guarding your base but also well fed and well equipped with weapons to defend themselves. Every night. I would go out to scavenge, leaving my daughter alone to watch in horror as strangers ransacked our place. It eventually broke her, taking all control I had of her away, then leading to extreme depression, crying all the time, developing an imaginary friend, becoming catatonic, starting fires, and then finally eventually leaving with another survivor who joined my group a few days before. Your survivors can even commit suicide in this game if they really feel all hope is lost. It is crazy and brutal. There are so many outcomes that you can have depending on the multiple different choices you make that I know for sure I haven't even seen all of them. I've probably only seen like a third of all of the different things that can happen. There are a lot of things in this game that can keep your attention for a very long time. Another thing I like about this game is the fact that there aren't too many buildables. You see games like Minecraft, The Forest, and Don't Starve, where you have like tons of different things to build in order to survive, some of which just turn out to be completely useless, so you never even build those things or anything, it's just it's a waste of material. But not in this game. Everything feels necessary to survive, since the amount of things you can make are absolutely essential. You're not bloated by all these unnecessary things. However, all that being said, this game isn't all great. First off, the game would have done amazing with a speeding up mechanic. I can't believe that there is no mechanic to just speed up time. 
You see, there are the occasional visits at your base. These people can be merchants or survivors in need of help or survivors just giving you items for helping them earlier in the game. But you'll have to wait until at least half of the day is over to make sure that no one is going to come knocking at your door. And this happens at random. You don't know when these guys are going to show up. And if you just continuously end your days, you will never get these guys knocking at your door unless they come super early before you're done doing all of your things for the day. And if nothing happens on that particular day, and you just waited all that time, well then you just wasted at least like 10 minutes just sitting there waiting for nothing to happen. At times, while you're scavenging, if you forgot to bring a shovel or you just don't have a shovel and you need to remove debris with your own hands, you're forced to just sit there and watch as your character just slowly digs away at the rubble. This game really needs a fast forwarding mechanic to allow you to speed up time like in The Sims. I also found it to become a bit too repetitive as I got further into the game. When there's not much new things left to build, you're basically just left scavenging for food and perhaps weapons or supplies to see how long you can survive for. Some people like that, some don't. I happen to be the latter. The game also features specific character traits. These help your survivors feel more unique and allow different playthroughs. You have Marin, who's a handyman. This means he'll require less materials to build items. You have Katya, who's good at bargaining, allowing her to trade away less for more. Paulv, a fast runner, allowing him to run fast. And then you have Roman, a skilled fighter. But there are some traits that just aren't as clear as to what their purpose is. You have Amelia, who's a lawyer, not really sure how that helps in this situation. You can create custom characters and choose your own traits. So you have a photographer with a keen eye, but from what I've experienced, they don't find more loot than the average survivor without this trait. And then you have a good mathematician. I also have no clue what this does. And obviously all of these traits have a purpose, otherwise they wouldn't be in the game. But you'll never know what they do because the game never tells you what they do and the traits just don't seem to bring much of an effect for you to see the differences in them. I did also get a few minor glitches, nothing to detract from the game at all, but I did get this weird glitch where when speaking to one of my survivors with another survivor, someone will be like, he'd be floating in midair as if he was sleeping on a bed and then he'd sit up and get off of it as if he was getting off of a bed which is pretty weird it happened a lot actually i did get this other weird glitch where my survivor's portrait went black for a time and it just stayed black for the entirety of my playthrough until i restarted the game other than all of that there are some nice little touches too like the ability to use custom portraits for your custom characters i thought this was pretty cool i grabbed a couple of friends on facebook and was off to survive 40 days in a war-torn city the modding community seems pretty nice to you, although most of it seems to just add in portraits, which, as I just said, you can do that yourself with MS Paint. There are still a lot of gameplay mods too though, so you're all good with that. And you have different scenarios, which means you can start a journey with a set of different characters that the game provides for you. This just overall adds to the replay value, which, as you can tell, if you've been paying attention, it's pretty great. You can easily squeeze out tons of hours just playing this game. That is why, as my final rating for this war of mine, I am going to give it a 7 out of 10. It is a great game. Any fan of survival games should definitely look into this and really consider picking it up. 
with tons of replay value and social commentary on the effects of war. It's a great game and really deserves more attention than it's getting. The developers have even begun adding in a 3 episode story mode with the first episode already released. And let me tell you, it's nothing to scoff at. The story holds its own and always kept me going and gave me reasons to actually want to survive. I was easily invested in those characters and by the end of episode 1, I was genuinely surprised. So with all this and more to come, I think it's a worthy contender of being in your library. That's all from me today folks, thank you all for watching and have a good day.